Over the last couple of years, we've shown how ArcGIS is advancing to become a premier platform for geospatial AI to help solve complex problems better, or in some cases, solve problems that we couldn't earlier solve when using traditional tools and techniques. So let's take a look at how it's done. You prepare data for deep learning, you train the models, you validate them using ground truth data, and then you deploy them into production and scale, of course, as necessary to meet your needs. You can run inferencing interactively or in batch mode via user experiences or in a scripted manner, allowing you to bring open libraries and techniques to accomplish these powerful workflows. We asked ourselves, can we simplify this workflow? The answer we came up with was a single module in the ArcGIS API for Python called ArcGIS Learn. What ArcGIS Learn allows you to do is find a, have a unified way to easily train and to use the deep learning models. It's very simple, it's very intuitive, and the training data is directly consumed, and the saved models are directly usable within ArcGIS, whether it be within Pro or Image Server or the Notebook Server. You may have seen some examples of this, what you could already do with imagery data and the ArcGIS Learn module, like object detection and classification examples that you see here. What we are excited to announce today is that we can do more with ArcGIS Learn in the areas of LiDAR, video, unstructured text, and multispectral imagery. To show some of these, I'd like to introduce my colleagues from the spatial analysis team to showcase how some of these things are possible with ArcGIS Learn. So I'd like to introduce Shannon, Dimitri, and Lauren. Shannon, take it away. Thanks, Jay. This beautiful place is the James River near Chesapeake Bay. But just below the surface, there's a big problem. An invasive species called the blue catfish is dominating the waterway, leading to invasive species loss and impacts to the area's commercial fishing. Researchers at Virginia Commonwealth University are tasked with analyzing and studying this invasive population and conduct regular surveys to collect new data on the species. This drone footage is of one such survey. The team uses a method called electrofishing that makes the fish easier to catch without harming them. But the video itself unlocks new possibilities for effectively managing the blue catfish population. Here's how. We can bring the video into ArcGIS Pro and using the full motion video tools can easily extract individual frames from the video. Now researchers can go in and begin to identify a catfish and do their growth and age estimates. But imagine doing this for every catfish in every frame in every video. None of us want to do that. And that is where deep learning can come in handy. Using the built-in deep learning tools in ArcGIS Pro, we can quickly go from features that we're creating to the foundation of a training set for our deep learning model. And once we've exported this data, we can use it to train our model. In this case, a catfish detector. We'll use the single shot detector algorithm from the ArcGIS Learn module in the Python API, so-called because of its ability to identify all of the objects in an image in one pass as opposed to other methods that may need to go through an image multiple times before it detects all the objects. The Python API also includes a learning rate finder. The learning rate is a hyperparameter that defines how quickly our model will adapt to the problem. Pick too large of a learning rate, and you'll have unstable training. Pick too small, and you'll have failure to train. So using this can not only help us pick an effective learning rate, but also choose a reasonable amount of training epics. And here we can see how our model is performing with each epic and how long it took. But let's see how it does compared to data that it's never seen before. Here we have some ground truth data that we've labeled on the left and our model's predictions on the right. And right away, we can see that the model was able to identify a couple of catfish that we didn't even find. And as we keep looking, we can see that the model's ignoring birds and their shadows. So all good stuff. This model's doing a pretty good job. Now, once we have this trained model, we can deploy it to run against full video. Let's take a look. 
In addition to the bounding box graphics that you see appearing in the video, the model will also generate a CSV of metadata that tells us how many objects were in each frame and how big each bounding box is. And for the researchers, this information is critical. They can use the size of the bounding box to estimate the age and growth of a catfish, and they can use the amount of objects to estimate density. Put those together and you're well on your way to estimating biomass. Using deep learning, we can help researchers focus on the problem and finding a solution rather than toiling over data generation. And that was deep learning with full motion video.